Hi, I'm Zakia Ansari, Advocacy Director of the Alliance for Quality Education in New York. We are a coalition mobilizing communities across the state to keep New York true to its promise of ensuring a high quality public education to all students regardless of zip code. We are working to end the systemic racism and economic oppression in New York's public schools that continues to shortchange generations of black, brown, low income and immigrant students. AQE will develop and execute a plan for how the American Rescue Plan Act resources should meet the needs and priorities of families, students and educators for COVID-19 recovery and to combat systemically racist practices in schooling. We will work in both Rochester and New York City. In Rochester, we will work with the superintendent, chief financial officer, the school board and the fiscal monitor. In New York City, schools are under mayor control, so we will work with the mayor the chance of education and city council members. Ultimately, the goal is to continue to engage black, brown, and low-income parents, leaders, students, and community members in executing our strategy to meet their priority needs, accountability. We are excited because we are coming off of a tail end of a victory for billions of dollars for public schools. We have billions in federal dollars and billions from the state coming to our public schools. Parents always knew what they wanted to spend the money on. The excuse was we never had the money. Now we have it. Hello, my name is Morgan Craven. I'm the National Director of Policy Advocacy and Community Engagement at IDRA. We are a nonprofit that is located in San Antonio, Texas, but our work uh, focuses on federal policy issues as well as educational uh, issues that impact students across the U.S. South. Um, our mission is to uh, ensure equal and excellent uh, educational opportunities for all students that prepare them um, for college. Uh, I am super excited about our Action Accelerator project. Our policy advocacy and community engagement team is going to work with existing community partners and establish new relationships to develop a set of community-led recommendations for how uh, school districts and states should spend um, the federal relief money that is supposed to be um, for our public schools. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is to expand relationships with students who we really believe have so much to offer um, in terms of policy recommendations, not only um, for how this funding could impact uh, new uh, issues that have emerged from COVID-19, but also to really address the deep um, long-standing issues that we know really create inequitable educational opportunities for students. Uh, so happy to be part of this group and really looking forward to collaborating um, with other organizations and, and doing the work on this project. Thanks. Hi, my name is Sanford Johnson. I'm the Mississippi Executive Director for Teach Plus. I live in Clarksdale, Mississippi, which is in the Mississippi Delta, and I get to work with dozens of great uh, teachers in Mississippi as well as the state of Arkansas. Uh, the mission of Teach Plus is to work with an experienced and diverse group of teachers and to give them the policy skills and uh, policy knowledge needed to take leadership over policy decisions that will advance equity, opportunity, and student success. So this summer in the ARPA Accelerator, uh, we're hoping to work with a group of teachers across the state of Mississippi to help influence how those stimulus funds are spent at the district level. We wanna provide training and resources for teachers to conduct focus groups within their districts of other teachers um, to find out how they would prioritize investing these funds. And we also wanna prepare teachers to go to their superintendents, go to their uh, school boards to say, we've spoken to teachers in our district and here are their recommendations on how that money could be spent in a way that would not only address the, the challenges uh, brought about because of uh, COVID-19 or exacerbated because of COVID-19, but um, can also be invested in ways that will advance equity and opportunity for students. So what I'm really excited about uh, with this summer is the same thing I'm, I've been excited about for years and why I do the work that I do here at Teach Plus is that people trust great teachers. So policymakers trust great teachers, parents, students, community members, we trust great teachers. So what we're doing in this situation is giving great teachers an opportunity to say, based on my experience in the classroom, this is how I think we should invest the money. 
um, that we're getting through ARPA. And this is how we can spend that money in a way that's going to address the challenges of COVID-19. And we can also uh, address equity and opportunity for students. We are really hoping to build a strong network of great teachers throughout the state of Mississippi. Um, and we're, we're making sure that these, uh, these teachers are able to engage with policymakers at the local, state, and national level in a very solutions-oriented way. So not only are they talking about these are the challenges that I see in my schools, in my districts, and in my community, but they can also say, here are our recommendations on how we can solve some of these challenges. So we hope to uh, provide as many opportunities as possible for teachers in Mississippi, not just our fellows, but teachers throughout the entire state, not just in Mississippi, but also in Arkansas, uh, giving teachers the opportunity to influence policy. Hi, my name is Kevin Bogus. I'm the Education Policy Director at Coleman Advocates for Children and Youth, and we're based in San Francisco, California. Coleman Advocates has been around since 1975 and works with students and parents to build power for them to have more say about what happens in their schools and communities. This summer, our accelerator project is centered around personalized success plans. And really, how do we get our school district to ensure that each individual student has their educational needs met and that their families understand what that plan is and can support the school and the teacher in making sure that the student stays successful? summer and the fall that's coming for us is really exciting so much because it allows us to return back to schools uh, with our families being in distance learning uh, since the pandemic kind of started uh, it's really had a, a negative impact on our ability to connect with people and bring them into our work and to share what we're doing um, and so I think we're really excited about the, the fact that we're reopening and we're getting ready to kind of have schools reopen and people are getting vaccinated uh, and we can really connect with people one-on-one -on -one in their schools in their communities um, and really bring them into the work to, to, to really create power for our communities and make things better. Hey everyone, my name is Landon Mascarenas and I'm the Vice President for Community Partnership at the Colorado Education Initiative or CEI as we often say. Um, I'm really excited to introduce uh, ourselves to the Seek Common Ground community. Um, I'm a real big believer in what Seek Common Ground is doing and uh, we at CEI um, along with my two other incredible colleagues who are not with me today on the recording, but will be with me through every step of the process. Samantha Olson, our Vice President of Strategy and our incredible and visionary CEO, Rebecca Holmes. Um, both are really excited about the opportunity to partner with everyone here in this work, to connect with all the folks uh, around the country on this important project. Um, but I'd love to share a little bit about what we're about. Um, we're really excited to do um, two projects in the Seat Common Ground community, one around the issue of uh, thinking through and re-understanding, re-understanding, re-imagining measurement um, through our shifting assessment. Uh, at CEI, we have a, a long uh, history of uh, provoking and thinking through innovation in the assessment space, uh, in particular trying to hold a center uh, for innovation in a world where it's very hard to do so, with, hence the Seat Common Ground mission. Um, we've been supporting local accountability pilots across Colorado for the past uh, couple of years both through policy legislation and actually practice implementation. At CEI, we have a 12, 13 year history of working with over 150 districts across the state of Colorado and taking the accountability and innovation question to the next level is something that's really exciting to us. And uh, really think that the opportunity through this project to uh, promote fit literacy around assessment to families across Colorado will be an incredible opportunity. Um, the second opportunity that we'll be also engaging seek the Seek Common Ground community around is the issue of uh, the American Rescue Plan allocation dollars. And uh, we're in the middle of supporting uh, not only the state, but the districts into rethinking how they spend those dollars, uh, highly leveraging them with the voices of families and communities closest to the challenges and opportunities facing our communities in future. Um, it's a cliche to say these dollars are a once in a generation investment, but the truth is, is that uh, it will only be a once in a generation investment if our families and communities um, can't rally to name, speak, and live their truth in terms of how these dollars get allocated for them, with them, and by them. And we're really excited to do that. There's a few ways that we're thinking through that at this current stage and looking forward to hearing from everyone else in these plans. So um, with that, I would just uh, say thank you again. We are honored and humbled to be a part of this community and really, truly looking forward uh, to meeting everyone around the room virtually and in person, hopefully at some point. Thanks everybody.
Hello, I'm Diego Uriburu, one of the co-founders of the Black and Brown Coalition. Hi, I'm Shirley Brandman, a strategic advisor. And I'm Byron Johns with the Black and Brown Coalition. We are the leaders of the Coalition for Educational Equity and Excellence. Our work is focused on the county school district serving over 160,000 students in Montgomery County, Maryland. We are working to harness the collective energy of the black and brown communities working together to challenge deeply rooted systemic inequities in our public schools. And we are pushing the district to deploy the federal dollars to effectively engage black, brown and low income families by ensuring culturally appropriate outreach and engagement. By working to ensure that all educators and administrators develop the needed awareness of the lived experiences of these communities. By building the infrastructure necessary for black and brown voices to be heard and their feedback to actively sought and considered in district decision-making. We are excited to work for a lasting shift in power. Greetings seek common ground accelerator cohort. Gabrielle Dahlgren here, a rising Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School junior from Lexington, Kentucky, representing the Kentucky Student Voice Team. We are a fully independent youth-led organization that supports about 100 self-selected students from across the state as a research policy and advocacy partners in the work to make our education system more equitable, more just, and more excellent all around. So what do we hope to accomplish in this collaborative cohort? Thank you for asking. We would like to build on our recent youth participatory action research to support a youth-led citizen education storytelling project. Specifically, we would like to draw on original youth generated quantitative and qualitative data distilled from our recent and massive coping with COVID student to study and our four student led school climate audits. The five separate research studies conducted from April 2020 through April 2021 captured the perspectives of nearly 12,000 racially, socioeconomically, and geographically diverse Kentucky middle and high school students from nearly every one of the state's counties and represent a significant repository of real-time and relevant youth insight. Over the next three months, we would distill the original research, conduct additional research, and conduct additional interviews with students, educators, families, and other professionals to develop a storytelling series for widespread dissemination and publication within Kentucky. This student-citizen journalist approach would effectively, effectively help us identify youth-centered concerns, priorities, and solutions to education inequities and injustice. And if we pull it off in the way we intend, it will all serve to better inform conversations, both around measurement, assessment, and accountability, and state-level investment of American Rescue Plan funds as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. Why are we so excited about this opportunity, you may ask? Among other things, we can't wait to connect with innovators across the country to help ensure more democratic decision-making around public schools. And probably most of all, we can't wait to work together to show what's possible when our education system's primary stakeholders are engaged as solutions-oriented co-designers of our own learning experience. Thank you.